One day I woke up in the morning. Yeah. Oh my god! I have seen my balcony in my dream. It was so dirty. I better give it a sweep. I said. My dream was terrifying. There was another Chatai in balcony. I had to know for sure that there is no one other than me in this house. There is no one other than you here. I slowly moved through balcony. What was I thinking? Wasn't that phenomenal? I love my new intro. Welcome everyone. This is another Sunday of coronavirus and we're all together. So great to have you here seeing all your smiling faces. And today we will be talking about I, the I, what is I? Mm. Assume that five years ago somebody secretly stole your saliva and cloned you. You don't know it yet, but one day you just come across with your own self. Which one is you? You or you? Which one is you? Years and years ago in Greek mythology, there was a man called Daedalus. 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 And Daedalus made a labyrinth to lock down a beast called Minotaur. Theseus, our fearless hero of this story, the main character of this story, comes in and he just heads on to treat and he kills our poor Minotaur. Fuck Theseus, yo! Anyway, our beast Minotaur, our poor Minotaur, is killed by Theseus in this story. That's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So Theseus gets back into his ship and goes back to Athens. In Athens, there are lots of genius people, Greek mythology, Greek philosophers, Greek, Greek, Greek. One of them says, let's preserve that ship. People decide to preserve that. And guess what happens? A Greek person comes and says, this fucking ship is fucking rotting. Another one comes and says, I have an idea. Let's replace this one with an identical piece. So whenever any piece of that ship gets damaged, they just replace that with an identical piece. And one day, they just realized that they have changed each and every single part of the ship. So the ship was no longer Theseus' ship because Theseus have never been in that ship. Every piece of that was replaced. So this ship still ship of Theseus or not? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I was gonna talk about the I. So the I, our identification. I was gonna talk about our identification, I know. But believe me, Theseus has gotta do something with this. Our body is just like the ship of Theseus. Think of our nails, think of our hair or beard. We're just replacing ourselves. Let's ask this to science. There is a myth in internet that you may have come across, which says our body replaces itself once in every seven years. Actually, this statement is nothing but an internet myth. You don't become a new person once in every seven years, yet most parts of our body gets itself replaced. There are different types of cells in our body, and each has their own lifespan. For example, our red blood cells live about four months, where the white blood cells live more than a year in average. Our skeletal cells die and replace themselves constantly, just like the ship of Theseus, and this process takes about 10 years. On the flip side, and sperm cells have a lifespan of 3 days generally. Our body have about 75 trillion cells in total, and these cells have their own lifespan. Our body may die, yet it may take hours if not days for all cells to die in body. Our brain is a different story though. Brain cells typically last entire lifetime and they are not replaced when they die. So, next time when you hit someone, make sure you don't hit the head. 
Let's go back to our story and manipulate that a bit. Say Greeks not only replaced the original pieces with identical twins, but they also used teleportation to do that. Yes, teleportation. I know how it sounds like. So let's go back and ask this to science again. Have you ever heard of the word entanglement, a term of quantum physics? If two particles are entangled to each other, this means anything that affects one of them will affect the other one at the same time. One particle may be in Ankara, the other may be in New York, or maybe be in a million light year away. Still, these two particles will reflect each other's effects simultaneously. Okay, think of it as two roulette tables. Just ignore zero because it's neither red nor black. We know that half of the table is red and half of the table is black. Say we start to spin them simultaneously and we throw the ball and we're waiting for the results. We're just checking one of them and it is red. As these two tables are entangled, you don't need to check the other one because first one is red, the other one has to be black. It's like magnets. One pole is positive, the other pole is negative. Here is the question. What if a third table comes in? Now imagine these two tables are entangled. You are bringing a third table and you are entangling the third table with the first table. Now, if you spin the tables, regardless of the color each one of them will have, the only thing you know for sure is that these two tables will have the same colors as they will both act as opposite of their entangled pair. And using this concept, scientists tried to teleport some molecules from La Palma Island to Tenerife Island. And they indeed succeeded that. And this is how they made it. He starts by generating a pair of entangled photons in a lab on the island of La Palma. One entangled photon stays on La Palma, while the other is sent by laser to the island of Tenerife, 89 miles away. Now Zeilinger brings in a third photon, the one he wants to teleport, and has it interact with the entangled photon on La Palma. The team's able to use that comparison to transform the entangled photon on the distant island into an identical copy of that third photon. So finally, when we make teleportation possible, a new question will arise. We will question the teleported body is us or not, because the end product will basically be the entangled pieces of your entangled pieces. What do you think? Leave the comments below. Do you know what would happen if this question was asked to another freaking Greek genius, Heraclitus, with his awesome, fabulous, unbelievable wheeze, super duper cool, clever mind, he would say everything flows. So according to him, the ship of Theseus was already changed when Theseus came back from Crete to Athens, which I would totally agree. You know why? Because Heraclitus is a super duper awesome, fabulous, fantastic, phenomenal, unbelievable fucking genius. He knows the better. So that's it for me today. I hope no Greek would get offended with my kind of jokes. I know I may have some lack of humor sometime, but don't get offended, okay? Because I really appreciate what Greek philosophers said and done. By the way, I'm terrible at spelling some words. Heraclitus, Daedalus, Daedalus, Daedalus. This was, in a nutshell, the I. So, thanks for watching. If you like this video, just give it a thumbs up and until next time, take care and stay curious.